Have you been adjusting light? Okay. Watch. Watch. Oh, wow. See this wheel? Yeah. That's how you make sure when you're videoing that your light is right. Okay. I see the food that he was eating. Yeah. Or is that just his butt or his tongue? <laughs> and these things are actually little feelers, so they help him. Ew, it's so slimy. It is. It's really sticky. To go back in the water. Because he's starting to dry. Yeah, he looks like he's not as happy as he used to be. So he'll get a little more. We know from science that matter is just another expression of energy, like light or sound or color. Science also tells us that experience triggers the adaptive processes of evolution. New discoveries in the field of physics support this as well, but also offer a deeper understanding about how we as quantum constructs learn. In 2014, this guy, a physicist named Jeremy England, mathematically discovered that atoms function with intention. That they group and regroup with the intention of building a more effective quantum collective, a more efficient construct for harvesting energy. This suggests a fundamental need for experience. Noted researchers in the field of education focused on instruction and learning present ample evidence that supports the importance of the experience. Research in neuroscience shows us repeatedly the vital role experience plays in brain development and maturation. Howard Gardner's work in intelligence has given us a broader understanding of ourselves as compilations of interests, preferences, experiences, learning styles, backgrounds, cultures, and of course, intelligences. The question is, with every learner being a fingerprint, this unique mixture of intelligences, interests, preferences, learning styles, experiences, and backgrounds, and cultures. How do we teach to the broadest spectrum of the population? Paulo Freire believed that the best instruction and learning occurred when the masses were organized into action. A common goal or purpose, a shared experience. Multiple fingerprint perspectives focused on a topic relevant to the communities in which they live. For the first through sixth grade kids of South St. Petersburg, Florida, an examination of the ecosystem and habitats of Fort DeSoto North Beach seemed like the perfect shared experience. Rosters were checked and participants were grouped into micro units of three to four youth per adult. These adults from various community partners serve as mentors for their micro groups, but it's the youth participants who decide which habitat they go to in what order and what technology their group will take to capture their observations. In keeping with best known practices in education and communication, we provided several options. Look at this, yeah. This is shallow. You can come out. Look here at these, these bigger fish. Okay, I'm done. Can I do it? Yep. Did you want to do the camera? Did you want to do the camera? Have you done it before? You did it before, right? Yeah. Okay, somebody else hasn't done it wants to do it. Here. Okay, you give it to her. Tell her how to do it. So you can't drag it on the floor. You gotta, if you see fish, you gotta, you gotta break it. Okay.
nice big fish right out here. They look like the sand though, so they're hiding. How about we put it a little closer? Don't put it on the sand, but closer is good, yeah. Day two, held at the Enoch Davis Recreation Center in their conference rooms, was a continuation of the topic immersive experience, facilitated by multiple means, methods, and modes to ensure choice and representation for the broadest spectrum of the population.
but even taking great care to make sure best practices were applied, how do we know we made an impact? Mary Osborne, a 40-year veteran in education and a CLL board member, suggested that we administer a CAT. The CAT, or Class Assessment Test, is a simple five-question survey administered at both the beginning and the end of a project. For its simplicity and its response flexibility, the CAT seemed the least intrusive measuring tool we could employ. Based on CAT results and the footage you've seen in this documentary, we believe the project had the broad sweeping positive impact we'd hoped for.